a young lady who was involved in the world of entertainment, just like I was many, many years ago, going around the world and presenting some of the top leading music bands in the world, predominantly in the European sector. She joined MTV and she never looked back. This leading lady at the forefront of the entertainment industry, who converted to the most misunderstood, misunderstood and rapidly growing religion today. She has a book and she talks all about her journey from MTV to Mecca, from Babe to Burka, as her good friend Bob Geldof calls it. Perhaps from entertainment to entertainment is another way of describing this journey that is both inspirational for anyone who is looking for meaning in life. Hello everyone, thank you for inviting me, Christiana. Um, I don't know if everyone has not read the book. Um, it is, <coughs> what I loved about it is it was completely non-scary and I think as someone who's not a Muslim and who's, I'm not religious at all, to me the whole subject can be quite daunting and quite scary. So I, what I loved about the book was it was very accessible and very, I could really understand that you're just a woman like anyone else uh, embarking on this journey. And what I'd like to start talking about is... So kind of you, such an honor to say that, really, thank you. Uh, when you were a child, were, who, were, who did you look up to as a child? Were pop stars your... Did you worship pop stars? Did you have posters on your wall? And if so, who, who were you in love with when you were younger? You know, I didn't have as many posters on my wall, actually, as my sister did. But um, there was one who I really, really adored, and I, um, that was Prince. <laughs> I was a total Prince fan um, in my teens, and uh, then got to even meet the artist and all that, and met his manager, and in fact, um, you know, that was part of um, how I came to London. Through the manager of Prince, in fact, um, I, you know, he, he put Steve, in the... Steve Steve yeah, 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 that's right. I love Prince. Yeah, his music. It's interesting you say Prince because Prince was a strange mixture, really, of on the one hand very daring and very sexual, on the other hand, and all these songs were about <coughs> the cross. Yeah. He always talked about God. Do you think it's possible to have those two sides? wrapped up in one person. Do you think it was genuine what he was putting in place? You know, I find a lot of people who are very much into spirituality also very much have the other side to them. Actually, it goes together very well. Absolutely, why not? You see, in, in Islam, it's in fact focused in, you know, within certain boundaries, within marriage, you know. Uh, but it's uh, not a religion that denies um, physical pleasure at all just in the boundaries of uh, marriage. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so no, I think it, go, it does go together. I found it uh, again and time and again, you know, when I meet spiritual scholars and so on, and uh, <coughs> people, yeah. And when you first went to work at MTV, and I remember watching you on telly, I mean, you were just on the whole time. Um, you were the, the face of, of MTV. And how did you, find that world because we're, we're hearing a lot now about sort of Jimmy Savile and DJs and the Rolling Stones writing songs about underage women. Did you find that world quite scary or did you just sort of slip into it and love it or? Yeah, I think it was the latter, you know. I, I was 24 when I came to London and I was a new chick in town and invited all the time to parties and then going out and some one of my friends who was a bit of a partner in crime is here in the audience actually <laughs> and um, no, we had a lot of fun I must say you know at the time but then of course during it year in year out um, it all became also a little bit repetitive you know it was just music from morning to night and uh, at, uh, in the evening when I went out and people asked me about <clears throat> what do you do, oh, I'm well, well, a presenter on MTV, oh, music, and then it was again, everybody loves music here, so it was talking about music all over again, so I was always talking about music, and, you know, and, and that did get repetitive, and uh, I was lacking mental stimulation, so to say, and, and certainly, you know, I felt dissatisfied, you know, strangely enough, at the height of my career, I, I even felt, um, not suicidal, but I felt depressed. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. um, something was missing, and I couldn't really put my finger on onto what that was. You know. So from a Western point of view, you had everything. You had fame, money, success, VIP invites, you yeah. know, lots of friends. But that didn't really make you very happy. No, exactly. It didn't really, something was still missing, you know. Um, and I thought it was human love, but, um, you know, a boyfriend or something. But um, in retrospect, I realized that uh, no human being really could have filled that void. You know, it was something else. Were your family, what were you brought up as? Were your family religious? No, they weren't. Um, they were, they're Protestants. Um, God, I, I believed in God as a child, but um, religion didn't really feature much in our family at all. Um, my grandparents were very religious, but, you know, they'd already passed away, so I, you know, they, we weren't taught religion, but I think I've inherited it from that part of the family when I first saw the divine. When you were feeling unhappy and unfulfilled, did you feel you didn't really have anyone to talk to? Who did you, who did you sort of talk about this with? That's such a good question. You know, no, I didn't have anybody. You know, I really I didn't. Uh, at that time, you know, during the MTV days, um, no, I didn't talk to God then. No, I don't remember. I talked to God as a child, but um, I kind of lost that connection. So what's the first time did you have an attitude, did you have sort of an opinion about Islam <coughs> before you met Imran? In the news, did you watch it on the news? Did you read you know, about what was happening in America? You know, Were you interested? Well, well, you know, what was happening in America, this was, uh, remember I met Imran in 92. So this was way before anything else. Um, you know, yeah, there were certain suicide attacks, I guess, in, in Israel and Palestine. But um, no, I wasn't interested. Um, it all passed me by. Um, I had absolutely no idea. I wasn't taught Islam in school um, beyond the absolute basics that I'd forgotten. Um, you know, no, I really knew nothing about it. I just had this opinion, you know, it's another subject that didn't interest me, that it's something negative and are antiquated and you know, women are second-class citizens, and that's about it, yeah. you know. It's a strict book of rules, the Quran, and, yeah. and that's all I knew, nothing. So, tell us how you met, how you met Edna. Well, I met him at a dinner party, um, at a dinner party um, hosted by Susanna Constantine, and um, and that's it, and he was uh, my table partner, you know, I was sitting next to him, and, uh, and he just had very different views about everything, you know. Did he know who you were? Did he recognize you? No, he didn't, and I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I had no idea that he just won the World Cup for Pakistan, <laughs> and uh, you know, he was a really national hero in his country. Because I'm not, I am not raised with cricket, so uh, you know, in Germany we don't have cricket. So um, uh, no, and he never watched uh, MTV, so he didn't know that I was a happening DJ at the time, VJ rather. Um, so so no, so it was a good uh, you know connection that we had, very. Um, away from, you know, any fame or anything like that. And, uh, and, you know, and he just had a different attitude about everything, even that night. That night, um, this film Basic Instinct had just come out, and everybody was praising this film for being so daring, you know, especially with those sexual scenes, you know, being very provocative. And he said, no, this actually belongs to the private sphere. This is not, uh, in, in Pakistan, in our country, this film would be banned. And, People have lost a sense of shame, and you know um, this doesn't really, uh, you know, it shouldn't be aired like this in public, and so on. And it's actually a sign of a wider spiritual malaise, you know, morals malaise in Western society. My sort of feeling is that again, this is this is one area where Islam is is, is misconstrued. But you know, if, if we talk about Kabul under the Taliban, women could not wear heels, always to be covered up. That had the highest incidence of rape in the entire world. So it's not always the sight of a woman's flesh that, that inflames a man. It's, you could be completely covered up, who will still rape you. Do you what, what do you think about that? Oh, it's, it's, it's shameful and just absolutely outrageous. You know, I do um, believe, obviously, it's a woman's right to decide what she wants to wear. You know, no one should tell a woman what to wear, neither the state, nor the husband, nor the family. And also, if a woman wants to cover up, 
you know, the state shouldn't yeah. say no, or, or she shouldn't be discriminated uh, in the workplace, yeah. you see. So I'm feminist enough to, to definitely, yeah. Yeah. you know, a woman should, should choose uh, what she wants to wear, and uh, whether she wants to dress, or, or, you know, cover up or not. Do you think you would have discovered Islam without Imran? Do you think you'd have got there sort of eventually? Well, um, you know, if God wants to call you, he does, uh, you know, so his tool was Imran, you know. I think if he had sent a, a long-bearded Imam uh, at the time, I probably wouldn't have uh, even talked to him, you know, uh, but God knows what he's doing, and he sent that uh, cricketer, you know, handsome sports star at the time while I was working on MTV, and, you know, and, um, and, and he got me there. But I must say, I uh, converted after our friendship was finished, you know, so I didn't convert for anybody. No. But you had that, you had that discovery and education, you <coughs> yeah. to Pakistan yeah. as yeah. well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he yeah. introduced, he definitely introduced Islam to me, and he took me to Pakistan, where yeah. I had amazing encounters with, you know, very simple, very humble, extraordinary people, you know, who really touched me by, um, by their generosity. And, uh, and their warmth, you know, and, and how God features in their lives, um, you know. Being in Pakistan actually changed my life, I must say, you know, just witnessing these, uh, the people there, um, the way they, you know, the way they bear their circumstances with a dignity and, and, and patience that we don't necessarily see here, and yet how they can be so generous despite yeah. their, their, their yeah. dire poverty. Yeah. But this wasn't very good for your career, was it, as, as, as a, a TV presenter in Germany? Can you perhaps talk a little bit about the reaction you had, perhaps from your own family, friends? Did anyone sort of think <coughs> Christiana's going Great nuts? step. <laughs> <laughs> Most people thought I went mad, absolutely. In fact, even the German public thought so. Because um, as soon as they found out uh, when I converted in '95 that I'm a Muslim, I was sacked from my youth show. I was an award-winning TV presenter by then, and had won the equivalent of the BAFTA, you know, the German BAFTA, the, the Gold the Kama, Gold the Kama. And um, and uh, as soon as they found out uh, I'm a Muslim, one negative article after the next followed, and um, and I, I felt like I'm suddenly public enemy number one. You know, after seven years of positive press, it was quite a shock. It was really traumatic. I, every day I was being, you know, they were faxing me negative articles about me, you know, my production company in Germany and my parents. So my parents also didn't know what was going on. You know, they were of course traumatized and a little shocked. Were they? welcoming to you or a little bit suspicious that maybe you were just doing this next trendy thing or how were well, you it wasn't that it wasn't that trendy <laughs> <laughs> you know, Islam, I mean, as you know, I mean, I mean, um, no um, the Muslims always welcome me <coughs> with open arms and really warmly generally you know they love a Westerner um, taking up their religion especially maybe from the entertainment business. Um, they get a lot of Islam bashing, a lot of Paki bashing, and when someone talks with love about their culture and their religion, of course they, they're happy, you know, and it's genuine. It's always a, a very warm interaction that, uh, you know, with Muslims. Um, my, my parents <coughs> didn't tell you, you know, they were, they at first didn't uh, understand why I had to take up this religion. They thought, oh, well, maybe it's just another fad, but, um, you know, another thing, you know, that's going to be gone soon. But now they also realize how much it means to me and in fact how it has benefited me. I've, I've become, I would say, a more considerate family member now. You know, they, they notice it's, it's uh, I've become perhaps a slightly less egocentric person and less, yeah. being, you know, um, a more considerate, more conscientious person. So, so they see it does me good. Uh, don't you think in large part Muslims themselves <coughs> are blamed for the, the image they have in the West? and um, what they're doing to one another and I, well, yes. it's like with Israel right now I mean they're complaining, the Jewish community is complaining that there is too much anti-Semitism and it's really a quarter Well I mean let's Jewish. not get into the Israel-Palestine problem but um, you know uh, but for example the innocence of Muslims you know um, that, that awful film you know um, a joke of a film, ludicrous not even a proper film and then uh, Muslims react like a bunch of lunatics but actually, it was only 0.01% who acted like that. And of course, the media has to feature them as if that's the reaction of all the Muslims. And that's the bit of a shame. I mean, 
no Muslim should react in, a, in, a, in an aggressive or you know, uh, bizarre manner, uh, trying to defend our wonderful prophet, peace be upon him, in a completely unprophetic way. Yeah. You know, that's very the wrong. People killed, weren't they? Exactly. Yeah. It was totally outrageous. So yeah, Muslims yeah. are to blame. But the media will just... never ignore. <coughs> yeah. No. Because they're a minority, <coughs> but people always kill. The yes. loudest, yes. craziest people. You see, but then it would have been, would be so nice if the media could also <coughs> feature some voices of reason. After all, remember, if there are 1.5 billion Muslims and 0.01% react like a bunch of lunatics, why do we only see them all over worldwide television and not the vast majority of people who would think, oh, they're mad, you know, this film is nonsense. Let's just get on with it, you know, do something different. Comment about the book. Marvelous. Uh, Great book. I've read half of it so far. I'll <laughs> <laughs> read, read it completely. Uh, well, my name is uh, Tom Qureshi, uh, Chairman of the Forum on Financial Relations Development. Why we are supporting this book? We uh, financially supported this book to get published, really. Uh, when uh, Christian and uh, I met uh, nearly two and a half years ago, uh, she wanted to publish this book. As, as she said rightly, nobody was uh, willing to publish it. And I said to her, fine, let's just go and I'll just make a full paper, then publish it. Uh, <coughs> after one year we met again. And she had the same problem. I had two publishers by then and they didn't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, right, with the Taha, what do we do? I said, well, I told you last year, let's go and I'll make the paper, get it published. Alhamdulillah, we got it published. Now, what is this, why did we support this book? It is a very good story, it doesn't just talk about Islam. It talks about uh, culture, it talks about values, it talks about men, women, and very strangely, it counters radicalization. And I think the British government and European government really pick up on this very important point. This book is not only for the non-Muslims, it is for young Muslims particularly. They should read this book, and it will automatically, unknowingly, it will counter the radicalization, what the biggest problem we are facing now. And just a little comment about the media, what uh, Liz said about uh, uh, Taliban, for example. I'm not condoning what they did, but there is no evidence that uh, rape rate uh, went high when Taliban were running Afghanistan. As a matter of fact, crime rate went very down when Taliban were running. And this is on the record. So this is just what media hide, what we see, that is one part. And in India you mentioned that probably there is no uh, agitation, there is no... Uh, no agitation, but the, ha the whole country is not in chaos. The, well, in, in certain parts, there is a big chaos. We are in the chaos in, in Pakistan, or the borders of Pakistan and Afghanistan, because Western media is there, Western countries are there. This is there is a huge interest of Western world in that political strip, and this is what we see. We, we can... When we move out of that strip, the attention will divert to somewhere else now. So it is not as what uh, we read or see on the media. You know, I don't believe everything that the media is saying or doing. Media is a 24-7 business now. It impacts greatly every day of people's lives, and people do absorb quite a lot of things that are said in the media, and therefore media has to be responsible, and they have to be democratic, and they have to be factual. Thank you, everyone. Thank factual. you. Ask my heart Does it run on me up? Try no doubt It's hell, it's always here Ask my heart And I can see through you Tell I'm shining I'm looking for you Gallery, where we have been in conversation, Liz Jones with Christiana Becker, talking about her book from MTV to Maca. Liz Jones, thank you for coming here today. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. 
Uh, can I ask, what prompted you to come here and have a conversation with Christiana Becker about the book? Um, I've known Christiana quite a few years, but I, I was used to watch her on 